My name is Amina Jasho, and I'm a storyteller, researcher, feminist, and I'm also Mama Iman. More than a decade ago, I had my first baby. At 23, with a double degree under my belt, I got married to a man who I divorced not long after. What I discovered from that entire process was that I lost a huge part of myself, my identity. I saw my identity shift from being a girlfriend, daughter, woman, to mother and wife in a very short period. I realized I would never be free of societal gendered pressures and that mothers, even those who are learned and may not agree with patriarchy's decrees, were complicit in pushing their daughters into socially desirable molds of womanhood. They were afraid of being punished by the society. Feminist theories argue that in virtually every place and time, two words have been employed to denote and qualify the African woman, marriage and maternity. That is, womanhood in Africa can only be attained through motherhood. It became painfully clear to me that ideas about how mothers should be and act and who deserve to be a mother, in my community especially, were deeply entrenched in patriarchy and religious ideals and were way beyond my control. I also recognized that I was being allowed in spaces I did not have access to before. Aunties now allowed me to participate in grown-up conversations that I was not privy to. But I was so lost. This new word, mother, had defined me in ways I had never considered before. In 2018, I had my second baby. The 12-year gap saw me older, wiser, and more knowledgeable about being a wife and a mother than I knew what to do with. But then I had the baby and I realized I knew nothing about mothering in this age. I started devouring any material that would help me to understand how I can be the best mother for my child. The different books and films I read and watched shocked me. Aside from religious and cultural ideals that cloud our views of how mothering should happen, society had created images that symbolize who is a good mom or who is a bad mom. I understood how the media had been portraying mothering to us. The insistence that no woman is truly complete or fulfilled unless she has kids, that women remain the best primary caretakers for their children, and that to be remotely a good and decent mother, a woman has to devote her entire physical, psychological, emotional, and intellectual being 24-7 to her children, from the moment we get up until the moment we collapse in bed at night. The media are out there calling to us. They're yelling, are you really a good mother? And this attitude isn't just limited to the media. In Kenya, for example, motherhood is tied to the language of morality. Over and over, the message is reinforced to expectant women and mothers is that there is a right and a wrong way to do things. You can't be single and be a good mother. You can't be queer and be a good mother. Or even how to be a good mother when you're in a political office, for example. As a result, our culture has adopted the belief that sacrifice and suffering in silence are simply the cost of being a good mother. I had so many questions though. Why is it that we're taught to revere motherhood, but our society treats women who have children like crap? From inadequate public maternity facilities to gender-based double standards like no breastfeeding in the office or like no provision of crushes in the offices. I began questioning society's expectations of and policies and maternal regulations. Questions about breastfeeding, cultural myths, empty wombs in particular nagged at me. For example, even though miscarriage is very common, we rarely talk about it openly, leaving women to endure it quietly and alone, often convinced that something they did may have caused it. I wondered why we don't have more of these candid conversations floating around. Why aren't we as women shaping our own maternal anecdotes by telling our own stories? Instead, the information void is filled with opinions and information from sources that are not always accurate and often rooted in patriarchy. This information used to come with a side of you don't know or you're not good enough, which frequently leave women feeling confused, alone, afraid, and worse, ashamed. I thought about this a lot. And I wanted to create a safe space where we as women, as mothers, could share our own collective stories. And I thought if media had been complicit in sharing information on mothers rooted in patriarchy, then maybe feminists like me need to turn our attention to 
how we tell our collective stories better. Using digital storytelling, I wanted to hear your story. I wanted to interview single mothers, first-time mothers, mothers who regret being mothers, queer mothers, grandmothers and women who didn't want to be mothers, women who are fighting the system for mothers. I wanted to draw narratives from our own experiences of mothering and motherhood, intersected with our understanding of portrayal and stereotypes. I'm hopeful that sharing these stories will be empowering, as women get to know that they are not alone in having these thoughts and feelings. And in partnership with the Heinrich Boll Foundation, I would like to create a support network, a community that women can refer back to and say, see, I am not alone. In the next couple of weeks, I want us to have these candid conversations. We want to hear your story around how we will unmother the woman.